Hey, look at those early birds. Got a few of you guys joining us already. Awesome. Come on in. Welcome. I love to see people in the waiting room waiting for us to start here. You guys, thank you so much for being here today. We'll give everybody a little bit of a chance to jump in here, give everybody time to get their notifications. Sounds like you guys that are already here probably have your notifications set, so that is awesome. You guys always will know when we are going live. I love it. Welcome in, everybody. I'm just going to start to get some nails prepped and ready to go here for our design today. I'm just going to clip off this little cuticle area. It's a little bit easier to work with if you take that little cuticle off. feels like it's a little bit more of a realistic kind of a situ situation. And then I just like to kind of reshape that cuticle area a little bit. And then we will get into our demo today. Were you guys here for yesterday's live stream with the eclipse nail? Hopefully you enjoyed that. Let's see who's in the who's in the chat today. Who's going to talk to us today? Caroline DePaula, you're always here. I love it. I love it. I love it. Let's see here. Vivacious AJ, hello from Kentucky. You are a beginner. Awesome. You are in the right spot to learn all kinds of things. So we will have some fun today learn some nails, and hopefully answer some questions along the way. Let's see, Lori, Lori, Lorelei, Lorelei, uh, Maxine, hello from UK, awesome, welcome. Glad that you are able to join us from UK. I love it over there. I haven't been in a long time, but I would love to get back, so welcome. Just gonna clip a few of these nails. I think we're, well, we'll just start with one for today. I think that's probably what we're gonna get to is just one, one nail demo here. I do tend to talk a little bit through my demos, so I tend to take some time and get all of those get all of those little details in there. So we probably won't get through more than one nail today. So got that one prepped and ready to go. Just clean up my little edges underneath here. All right, let's see. Oh, Rick Ellis, hello from Houston, Texas. Awesome. Thank you for joining us. Let's see, G Glam Faye, hello Young Nails Gang, or hey Young Nails Gang, hey back to you, thank you for joining us. All right, whoops, sorry guys, I do tend to kick my, kick my camera here a little bit, it's sitting right in front of me, so sorry about that. All right, let's go ahead and get into our demo today. So what we're going to be doing today is I'm going to show you the technique that I like to call chasing our smile line. So I'm going to start by prepping the nails, pushing back the cuticles, and I always do this when I'm practicing, when I'm actually on a client, because the things that you do when you practice is what you're going to do when you actually get onto a real nail. So go through all of those steps that you practice with, um, go through those in your practice, and that way you won't forget when you actually get to a real nail. I'm going to come in with my medium sanding band. Well, it looks like that's not quite on all the way, so I'm going to open this up. Let that go all the way in, and then let me come back out here. I'm going to push that bit all the way on there, just to make sure that that sanding band was all the way on there, and then we're going to be good to go here. Okay, I'm going to turn my e-file on to about 5,000 RPMs. Make sure you guys can see here. Awesome. And then I'm just going to come right up around that cuticle area and then feather my bit through the rest of the body of that nail. Just very gently going to remove the shine. That's really all I have to do. I'm not going to go back over it and over it and over it. As long as you have the shine removed from that whole nail, you're good to go. I think a lot of times people kind of try to overdo their prep. So just make sure you guys, all you need to do is lightly remove that shine. We'll dust this off. Let's see here. All right, so we got that dusted off. Then I'm going to come in with my swipe, and I like to put a little pump of that onto my manicure brush, and then I'll just come through and scrub that nail and cleanse that nail. So swipe is our cleanser. It's like going to remove any of that dust from the nail, any germs, any bacteria, and it's going to bring that nail surface to a good pH level so it's going to bond really well to the product that we put on. All right, so we're going to wait until that comes back to a chalky dry look. That way we know that that swipe is completely evaporated. Then we're gonna put on our protein bond. 
You want to make sure that that swipe has completely evaporated from the nail before you put your protein bond on. Otherwise, basically what's going to happen is that swipe is going to null and void your protein bond. Protein bond works like a double-sided tape, so it's going to give us that really good sticky surface for our product to adhere to. And we want to make sure that that swipe was dry so that we do have that really good, um, that good sticky surface. And I don't know if you guys can see that, but I've got a tiny little fuzz right on that nail. So I just picked that up with my protein bond brush. We do not want that little fuzz on the nail. So just go ahead and grab that. Now, if I were working on a full set, I would go through and do a coat of my protein bond on all 10 nails and then come back and do my second coat. And you notice that I start about halfway down the nail and then work back towards my cuticle. That way I'm not gonna be flooding my protein bond into that cuticle area or into the side walls or anything like that. Victoria Kilman, hello there. How you doing today? Good to see ya. You guys, I love seeing all of these familiar names. I absolutely love it. Thank you all for joining us. It's so much fun. Uh, let's see. Yeah, you guys, can you guess what kind of nail I'm going to be doing? Well, I kind of gave it away already, I think. Did I or did I? I can't remember now. Maybe I was thinking in my head. So if you haven't guessed, take a guess. What kind of a nail do you think we're doing today? Put that in the chat. Let me, let me see what you guys are thinking here today. Or what do you, what do you guys want to see? Maybe not today, because I've got an idea for today, but what do you guys want to see in the future? What kind of nails do you want us to do? What kind of demos are you wanting to see? Put that in the chat, let us know. Smile lines, drum junkie, yes. We are doing smile lines today. And maybe you were here early when I, I, I think I did actually say it earlier um, in our stream here. So we are doing smile lines and I'm gonna do a technique that I like to call chasing the smile line. So it's basically gonna be kind of highlighting that smile line so it gets a really crisp definition. So let's get into, let me grab a couple of extra little table towels here. I'm gonna wipe, use those to wipe my brush on. And let's see, I'm gonna grab my Cover Pink, I actually have my Cover Pink in a smaller container today. It just was kind of overflowing in my other container and I just wanted to use the little, little mixing jar. So that's what I've got today. I've got my Cover Pink and I'm also gonna be using some Speed Clear. I'm also gonna be using a couple colors from our Slick Pour collection. And this one is American Rose and our glitter is Cheat Sheet. So a couple of really pretty colors today, kind of on the rose goldy tones for our glitter, and then kind of a red rosy wine, yeah, kind of a wine color. I like that one. Okay, so let's see here. Let me grab my brush. and I'm gonna be using Greg's signature brush today. It is a size 12. If you're using a smaller brush, the size we have a size nine as well. You can definitely use that as well. Um, just kind of personal preference. Let's see, what else are you guys asking? Um, how to sculpt square nails? I'm gonna do. Yeah, I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna do a coffin shape today. Maybe maybe we'll save square for another day. But let's go ahead and pour our monomer. Lori, Lori, I'm so sorry, Lorelei, Lorelei, Smile Lines, yes. I apologize for butchering your name. I do sincerely apologize. But yes, you are correct on the Smile Lines today. All right. Ah, Maxine Clark, Cover Pink is my favorite. Yes, I love Cover Pink. It is probably one that I use between Speed Clear and Cover Pink. Those are probably the ones that I use the most as well. So beautiful color, and it really is a good color to go with any skin tone. It is on the cooler tones, so if you and your clients like the cooler tones, go with the um, cover pink. If you like more warmer tones, we do have the cover peach as well. So you guys have choices. Let's see here. All right, so we're going to come in, and can you guys see? Let me readjust just real quick. As I'm adjusting the camera, you guys, make sure to hit that like and subscribe buttons. Definitely let us know that you're enjoying the video. If you subscribe to our channel, that way you're going to get notifications when we do go live, so you don't want to miss on those notifications. All right, I think now I'm going to pick up just a slightly bigger pearl. We're going to make a little bit of a bigger um, smile line here. Let me bring in the camera just a little bit. All right, so I'm going to pick up my cover pink and I'm gonna just grab that real quick here 
and I'm going to hold that pearl for about three to four seconds before I set it on. It's just going to kind of let that product set up just a little bit. I'm going to drop it right down by that cuticle area and I'm angling that finger straight down so that my product is going to start to flow. I'm just going to kind of tap out that cuticle area, make sure that it is nice and flush down to that natural nail. And you guys can see that that product is running and it's starting, it's kind of running off to the side here. So I'm gonna guide that a little bit more into kind of a teardrop shape and bring that into more of a smile. So I'm already starting to get that smile line shape. I'm gonna wipe out my brush and kind of use the edge of my brush to come in and just tuck in that smile to really crisp it up a little bit more. So now you can see Sorry guys, let me get a little better focus. There we go. Now you can see that that smile line is really coming into play. And I'm not doing a ton of work at this point. I'm really, I really kind of just let that product move and do the work for me. Looks like I got a tiny little air bubble right in the back. I'm just gonna kind of smooth that out. We should be good to go. And then I'm gonna take a peek from the free edge. Now I wanna make sure, let me come in real tight on this so you guys can see. I want to make sure that I have good thickness from one side to the other. So from here all the way through here, all the way through the side here, I want to make sure I have good thickness so that when I put my free edge on, my product is going to fill in. Let me see if you guys can see. My product is going to fill in all the way to here. And by having that thickness here on the sides and it's not curving, it's not rounding out, it's coming more flat. My product, when I put my free edge on, is going to fill in all the way to the sides here, and I'm not going to end up filing off my little corners here. So when you're doing your smile lines, it really is important to build up that product a little bit on the thicker side, even thicker than what you might think. And it's kind of like you almost bring it so it's almost off the sides. You can see it's coming, especially over here, you can see it's coming almost off the edge of that nail, right over there and right over here, almost off the edge, okay? All right, so I think we've got our smile line pretty okay. Now, if you're still not, you know, not perfect with your smile lines, I'm gonna show you a quick little technique here that you can make your smile lines perfect, okay? So if you're doing smile lines, what I would recommend is go through the full set, do your pink application on all 10 nails. Then you're gonna come back, and I know you guys have heard me tell you this before, when you're doing smile lines, if you don't get them perfect, take a brand new 150 grit file. Okay, I have not taken the sharp edge, edges off of this just yet. I will after I do this technique, but make sure to leave those sharp edges on for now because we do need a good sharp edge here, okay? So you would go through, do all 10 nails, and then come back, and by the time you're done with the 10th nail, this first one should be set, okay? So we're gonna wait just a little bit longer until it's completely set, and then you can use your file to really come in and crisp up those edges. Okay, let's see, Let me come in a little bit more. All right, I'm gonna set my Dappen dish off the side so I'm not filing and getting any dust into that. I'm gonna keep my file straight up and down. I'm not coming in at an angle like this. I'm gonna keep my file straight up and down. So all I really see is that blue line of my file. And I'm just gonna gently file through that smile line let me bring this just a little bit over to the other side here. There we go. So now I'm gonna just come through and really crisp up, make that smile line nice and sharp, nice and crisp, so that when I do put my free edge on here, I put my glitter, I put my other colored acrylic on here, it's gonna be a really nice, crisp, sharp smile line. So you guys, if you're not, not perfect with your smile lines, it's okay, you can fix them. You know, you guys, everything about doing nails so much is about knowing how to fix things or knowing what to do if something happens that you didn't expect, okay? So don't worry, we're not all perfect every single day. And I don't do a ton of smile lines in salon right now, so sometimes my application is just a little bit off. So I do like to come back in and really perfect with that hand file. Make sure everything is nice and smooth, nice and even. And as you're filing, you're gonna start to be able to see kind of that filing dust. Let me see if I can push in a little bit more here. See how you can start to see that filing dust here? You're gonna be able to tell, bring this over just a little bit more. 
you're gonna be able to tell where your high points are on your smile line. So you wanna make sure that those two high points are even, okay? You wanna make sure that one's not up here while the other one is down here. You wanna make sure that those come all the way up nice and even. So I'm looking at my nail and it looks like my left side here is just a little bit lower than my right. So I'm gonna file just a little bit more on that left side and then we'll smooth that left side out nice and smooth and even all the way around through that smile line. And I think they are now both up to the same level. And one last quick smooth all the way through, and I think, and we are good. Okay, so let me come back out here. I'm gonna dust off this nail. Now, if your form popped off, or if maybe you feel like you have too much dust on there, Go ahead and take it off. It's okay. Find another file or another um, form, and we can just reapply that form. So not a big deal. All right, we got all of our dust off. Got just one little, one little area that's not quite, not quite shaped. And you guys, when you're doing the full set of this, you're gonna really get kind of into that the swing of it into the routine of the application. So by the time you get to your last nail, chances are you're probably not gonna have to do a whole lot of perfecting with your file on your smile line, okay? So just kind of getting into the routine of it will get you those, those perfect smile lines. All right, okay, I think we're good now. I always say that, I think we're good and then there's always one more thing. If any of you watch Columbo movies, you know what I'm talking about. Does anybody watch Columbo movies? He's always got one more thing. Let me know in the chat. Do you, do you watch Columbo? <laughs> I know it's a crazy question, but... Okay, so let's go ahead and put our form back on. And take that little tab out of the center. I'm going to pinch my little silver tabs together nice and even. And we will get that back up underneath our free edge. Make sure that's nice and straight. That bold line down the center of the form is coming right down the center of our finger. Make sure that's lined up nice and straight. And I think we're good to go. I'm just going to kind of pinch this a little bit more underneath because I'm going to do a, a um, coffin shape today. So I want to make sure I'm getting a really nice tight pinch in my form here so that we get nice and tight in our C curve. Oh, Phyllis, Columbo about 30 years ago. Yes, I know, Columbo is an old movie, or old, old shows, old movies, whatever you call them. But I love them. I love the old stuff. All right, let's see here. Uh, Prisha is a new nail artist and really wants some advice on how to do faster because it takes like four hours. Yeah, so here's my best advice is practice. The speed is really basically your last skill that you get. So by practicing and learning the routine, learning how to apply your product, learning what steps come after each other, that is where your speed is gonna come. Once you learn that application technique, once you learn you know, the process, then you can work on your speed. So give that a try. Just do lots of practicing for now, okay? All right, so here's how we're gonna chase our smile line. I'm gonna pick up, and this was, uh, now I can't remember, American, American Rose. I believe is what our color was here. So I'm gonna pick up a pearl of this and we're gonna bring that right to our smile line. Actually, you guys, let me come in so you can see a little bit closer in here. Okay, there we go. Try that one more time. I'm gonna pick up a pearl of kind of my rosy wine color and I'm just gonna tap that on my table towel just to kind of release a little bit of that extra. And I'm just gonna start to kind of bring that right up to my smile line. Now I'm not trying to create a whole lot of thickness. I'm not trying to create the structure. I'm not even trying to really create the free edge. I'm actually gonna take off a little bit of that extra. Add a little more than I wanted on there. I'm just bringing that product up to my smile line and then I'm gonna kind of feather out the edge of it. Now, don't worry if your blend isn't perfect. You're not even gonna notice it. You're not even really gonna see this part of the nail unless you're looking from underneath. 
So if you feel like you need to really be perfect underneath the nail, you can spend a little bit more time blending out that edge, but don't worry too much, okay? And all of this product that's up over our nail bed here, our nail body area, don't worry about that either. All of that is gonna file off. So if you're doing this nail and your client looks at you like, um, what is going on? Why does my nail look like this? You can tell them, rest assured, I know what I'm doing. I've done this before and it's gonna be fine. It's all gonna file off. Now I'm gonna be working with one of our glitters. This is our Slick Pour product and it is a glitter and acrylic mix. So a lot of times I'll come in and really make sure that I've mixed up that, um, that acrylic because a lot of times the acrylic will settle to the bottom and then the glitter will come to the top. So when I pick up my pearl, I wanna make sure that I'm actually getting some of that acrylic that's in there rather than just picking up glitter, okay? Looks like strawberry syrup. Ooh, yeah, I like that. I like that, that's, that's awesome. Let's see. Um, KK, how to pick up a bead. We actually have some great videos on our YouTube channel here on how to pick up your pearls of acrylic. Definitely check those out, okay? Check out our channel, you guys. We have so many different videos for you to learn all different techniques, okay? So I'm gonna pick up, let me come in here, you guys can see. I'm gonna pick up, oh, kind of maybe a, a smaller to medium sized pearl. And same kind of technique, I'm just going to drop that down and blend that back up to my smile line here. Again, we're kind of chasing that smile line. We're kind of putting our product right in front of it and just gonna start to kind of feather out that glitter. All right, you guys, you gotta vote here again. Tell me in the comments, do we want more sparkle or not more sparkle? I know your answer, but um, should I add some mylar to our nail or should we just leave it as a glitter fade? Let me know in the comments or maybe we can even do a poll. No, we already have a poll going on, it looks like. But tell me in the comments, should we add mylar or no mylar? Sparkle or less sparkle? Let me know, you guys. Maxine Clark, more sparkle, absolutely. More sparkle, more sparkle, more sparkle, more, yes, more, more sparkle. Okay, you guys, you're speaking my language then. All right, let's add some more sparkles. I'm gonna close up my acrylics here Maxine Clark, no mylar? What? No mylar? Wait a minute. <laughs> All right, sparkle, sparkle. All right, lots of you guys are saying sparkle. So I'm, I have my um, mylars. I actually have poured my mylars. It's just is just a simple art tray, um, nothing fancy, but I actually have all of my colors poured out in there. And then I have an area where I have all of my, all of my colors all mixed together. So a lot of times I actually just like to pull and take a lot of those different colors. And that's, I think what we're going to do today. So we're going to grab a bunch of that already mixed mylar. And I'm just going to kind of sprinkle that down onto my table towel here. Just kind of separate them a little bit so I can pick up a few pieces here. So, all right, maybe some red or fold mylar. I think we got some red in here. You guys can see a couple of different colors and I really like to blend and mix my mylars. I feel like you get a lot more dimension to it, a lot more color, and especially on a nail like this where we do have a little bit of kind of some different colors in there. So I think this mix of our mylars is gonna be really super fun on this. Okay, I'm gonna bring in my Speed Clear because right now I just have a little bit of that glitter acrylic onto our nail, onto our form here. So I need something for our Mylar to stick into. So I'm gonna take a small pearl of my Speed Clear. I'm gonna just drop that down Kind of blend that out a little bit here just to give my give myself kind of a wet space to adhere that mylar to just kind of an area that my mylar is going to stick into and then tilt down a little bit here i'm just going to pick up a few of those pieces kind of tapping them with my brush and then just set them down into that wet acrylic so just kind of picking up set them down and you guys, with mylar, you don't have to be very particular. Now, if you like to be a little bit more particular and you're like, oh, I want that piece on there, then grab that one piece, okay? But it doesn't have to be perfect. It can just kind of be random, however you want your design to look. Now, I'm gonna take 
one more pearl of our Speed Clear, and I'm gonna do a second layer of our Mylar. I feel like sometimes when you do a layer of the clear, do some Mylar, do another layer of clear, it almost looks like the Mylar is floating in the nail. So it just gives it a really fun look, a really different dimension. So definitely do, do some layers. See how you like it, see how it comes out. And just randomly placing Placing those mylars is really just going to give me a really pretty glow on this nail. You can already see it kind of glowing, but I'll tell you, once we get the top coat on, when we finish this nail, that's when the color really pops out. So you got to stick around. Make sure to wait and stick around until the end, until we finish this nail, so you can see that really pretty finish on there. All right, so we've got our mylar on there. Now, if we take a look from the side, you can still see there's a pretty good drop down here, okay? So from my smile line down onto my free edge, there's a good drop down. I need to come back in and I need to fill in all of that space. So basically all that space that's under my brush here. Sorry guys, I'm a little shaky today, apparently. Um, we're gonna fill that in with our Speed Clear and that's what's gonna build up the structure of our free edge. Oops, let me come into camera here. Yeah, definitely good choice with the Mylar. I thought so too. I think you guys were on the right track. So we're gonna pick up one more pearl of my Speed Clear. I'm just gonna give that a little tap on my towel, drain out a little bit of that extra liquid, and I'm gonna set that down and brush that up to my smile line, bringing that all the way up into those little corners in the sides, really encasing all of that mylar, all of that glitter, all of the color, really just sealing all of that product onto the nail or into the nail actually so just kind of pressing that out bringing that down to my free edge and starting to now actually create some structure to the nail all right i'm going to bring a little bit more down to my end i think i need just a tiny little bit more product right on that free edge and I don't wanna to take too much from the rest of the structure. So I'm gonna take one more tiny little pearl here, just about that size. And again, I'm gonna drain that on my paper towel and then we'll just set that right down on that free edge. So right at that end to really give us that good final shape. Press it out if we need to. Coming in on my sides, again, really kind of bringing those sides in so I have a nice tight coffin shape to the nail. And then we'll let this set up a little bit. Okay, so now if we take a look here from the side. So now we actually have a little bit more structure to our free edge. We've got our cuticle area nice and thin. We've got our highest point right through our stress area and then it flows all the way back down to our free edge. And Victoria Kilman, trust the process. Yes, absolutely. I know this is one of those nails that, yeah, you guys are looking at it and you're like, what the heck is that? What is all this mess up here? What is going on down here? It looks like a crazy mess. But when we do our filing, all of this color that's over the surface here, that's all gonna file out. And because we came through with our hand file and we sharpened up that um, smile line, all of that is gonna be super, super sharp, super pretty and that mylar in there is just gonna glow. So I'm gonna close up all of my products here so I don't spill them or I don't get any filing dust in them when I'm finishing the nail. And let's kind of move everything off to the side here. So let's take a quick, take a quick feel of our product here. Now, when I'm working on nails where it's either a coffin shape or a stiletto or something where I really want a nice tight C-curve, I can come in and use my fingers to pinch that C-curve, or I can use my magic wand. Let me come back out here a little bit. So the magic wand works really good on a natural nail. On the, on the practice hands, it doesn't work quite as well. It does kind of have a tendency to kind of, kind of bounce off a little bit, but the magic wand works really good for pinching in those C-curves. You're gonna open that magic wand up, and our product is still just a little bit soft, so I don't wanna squish it just yet. So what you're gonna do though, you're gonna open up that magic wand just by pinching it right at the handle, open that up, set it onto the nail, and then you can just release it, okay? On a natural nail, on a real life client, it's gonna stay there, it's not gonna pop off or anything. On 
the practice hands, it does kind of pop off from time to time. But this is gonna really help to pinch in right in kind of that stress area right up here. And you can kind of see, whoops, sorry guys, let me come in. When you're working on a stiletto or on a coffin shaped nail, it's not gonna get that pinch right down on that free edge. So that's where I'll come in with my fingers and I'll just give that a little bit of a press right on those sides. And I always say, make sure that you're using the same fingers on both hands. So either your pointer fingers, your middle fingers, your thumbs, but what you don't wanna do is use two fingers on the same hand. So like your thumb and your pointer, that's not gonna give you even pressure. You're gonna get more pressure on one finger versus the other. Whereas if you're using the two pointers, you're gonna get nice even pressure from both. Okay, so make sure that when you're pressing in your C-curve, use your fingers, use your magic wand. Don't try to do the thumb and the, and the pointer finger, okay? All right, so my product, I can start to hear, if I tap on that, I'm starting to hear a sharper click. If it's not quite set, it's gonna be more of kind of a thud kind of a sound, but we're getting that sharp click now. If you don't have artificial nails on, you can use your brush Use that handle to kind of tap and that's going to help you um, to hear that that sharper click too okay all right so in the meantime my brush has been sitting in my monomer in my dappen dish like that cleaning itself out so before i start to do my filing i'm going to go through and just clean out that brush rinse it in the monomer and then i'm just going to wipe both sides of it on my table towel roll it back to a point and we're ready to go for the next time. So nice and clean, okay? I'm gonna put my cap back on my Dappen dish, again, making sure I don't get any dust in there. And then, I set some other things to the side. I'm going to get my dust extractor ready. And I think our nail is good and set. So I'm gonna just pinch that form. Come in so you can see. Pinch that form away and then we'll peel that down, take our form off. Okay, so to start filing, I'm gonna start with, let me grab, what do I have here? I've got my X cut bit. So this is, it's a little dirty. There's a little bit of product in there. Don't, don't mind that. It was just used on a practice hand. Um, so this is our X cut. It is a carbide bit. So it's designed to shave product down. So this one works really, really well for taking your bulk down, taking all that excess product off. If you don't feel comfortable using the bit that's got that little bit of a sharper edge, we also have, and again, you guys, this has a little product. It was just used on, on demo. It's, this is what our safety bit course. It is basically the same bit as our X cut. It just has a rounded top rather than that flat top. And that rounded top, when you're working up at the cuticles, it, it's a little bit safer. So if you're a beginner, or maybe if you're not 100% comfortable with your electric file, definitely start with the safety bit course. So it's going to give you a little bit more security that you're not going to maybe cut the client or anything like that. So, All right, let me turn my dust extractor on here. I'm going to turn my e-file on. We're going to go about about 14 to 15,000 RPMs. Actually, let me come back in here. So about 14 to 15,000 RPMs. And I'm gonna start by just straightening out my sides here. And on my left side, I'm just gonna pull towards myself. Let me get you guys a little bit, a little better view here. Does that work? Okay. So just pulling towards myself. I'm gonna straighten out my free edge. I'm turning my hand piece. I'm gonna make sure you guys can see this. So I'm not, I don't have my hand piece completely perpendicular to that nail. I kind of slightly angle it and let me show you from the side what I'm doing here. Okay, so that's a better view. So I'm not perfectly straight up and down. I'm just slightly angling it to the end of that nail. And then I'm going again, not, sorry guys, not straight in. I'm just angling slightly to the side, okay? All right, so just pulling across that free edge to straighten that free edge out and give me a nice coffin shape there. Okay, so again, on my left side, I was pulling down. On my right side, I'm gonna push up. I wanna be going basically against the rotation of my handpiece or of my bit. Um, so again, pulling down on the left side, 
pushing up on the right. Now, if you're a lefty, you're gonna be doing the opposite. So a lefty, you're gonna be holding, obviously, in your left hand, but you're gonna be pushing up on the right, wait, sorry, you're gonna be pushing up on the left side and pulling down on the right. So right-handed, push up on the right, pull down on the left, left-handed opposite, okay? Don't worry, we don't forget about our lefties, I promise. I know you're out there and I know it's hard too. So, okay, so I'm gonna come underneath my lower arch here and I'm just gonna take out a little bit of that bulk. I'm not gonna try to get all the way back up in there. Now, on a real person, it's a little bit easier if you're coming in on those sides, you can get up a little bit closer into those lower arches. On a practice hand, the end of the bit kind of bumps into that plastic and it'll kind of kick back a little bit. So as you're practicing, Practice working through that, you know, the extension on that lower arch, but don't try to come all the way back up into that sidewall there, okay? Susan Turner, you're late to the party today, but you know what? You're here, you made it, and you're gonna see the fun end, end results. Okay, same thing. I'm gonna just pull that bit down my lower arch here, kind of straighten that out. And then let's come to the side view. So oh, let me turn that a little bit there. So we're gonna to come to our side view. I'm gonna start by just working a little bit right around that cuticle area, kind of thin and taper out that cuticle. I'm gonna actually turn that on the side so I can see where my arch is. And I'm just gonna work down the top part of my arch. I'm not coming all the way from side to side. So if you tend to go from side to side, what usually will happen is your bit's gonna catch and it's gonna wrap around, okay? And then you're probably gonna cut right into your corners over here. You may potentially even cut your client on the side. So make sure that as you're working here, you're just coming from the top and coming over the nail, okay? Or even literally just right down that arch of the nail. So you guys, I'm gonna kind of turn this so you can see a little bit, but as I'm filing, you're gonna see all of that product that was up over our pink is all gonna file out, and we're gonna really be able to see that smile line come through. Okay, so let me look from the side again, making sure that I'm getting the proper arch placement, thin out and taper down that free edge. All right, so you can see that smile line's coming into place, okay? I'm gonna take a little bit more product off my sides. If we look from the end, you can see I filed right, oops, there we go. I filed down the center. Now I just need to take bulk from my sides. So this side here and this side here. And to do that, I'm just gonna basically pull that bit towards myself and thinning out those edges, bringing everything even to what I already took down from that center, okay? So just pulling nice long movements all the way down, come back over to our other side here. Again, pulling all the way down, making sure it's nice and smooth, getting all of that product to kind of blend. Oops. All right, I think we're getting there. So if I'm kind of looking down the barrel, I still see maybe just a little bit of thickness over on this side. So let's come back all the way over there. All righty. Gonna just pull through just a little bit more. So now you can really see that smiling starting to come through. And because we had that, um, that darker, that solid color, underneath there, that's why we're gonna be able to see that really bold um, bold color right at that smile line, okay? I'm gonna do just a little bit more tapering again all the way through here, pulling all the way through nice and even. I usually take one more quick look from my side view so that I can make sure that everything is nice and even. My cuticle area is nice and flush and that arch is right where I want it. Okay, so I think we're good there. You guys make sure while I'm switching out my bits here, if you haven't already, we would love it if you would like our video, subscribe to our channel. So that way it's gonna be able to, we're gonna be able to get way more education out there for you guys and you're not gonna miss the notifications. So hit that like button, hit that subscribe button and join the Young Nails family. All right, so I switched to my sanding band. This is a medium sanding band and I'm gonna turn my speed to about 7,000 RPMs. Now this is kind of a optional 
step, but I like to do this just because it's one less thing I have to do with my hand file. So this is just really gonna help me taper everything a little bit more, get that product nice and smooth, really nice and flush down to that cuticle. So again, I just came around that cuticle area and then just kind of following through the body of that nail, make sure our nail is in here good, it's not gonna pop out. And really just perfecting, so again, less filing I'm gonna have to do by hand. Okay, and just kind of feathering through. And I think we are good to go with that. All right, last steps here we're gonna be doing is hand filing to really perfect our shape, perfect our um, outline of our nails. So I'm gonna start, oh, let's see here. I grabbed, this was my old file. So let me come back out here and I always like to show this. So this was our file that we used to clean up that smile line. I didn't take the sharp edges of it off for that step, but now I need to make sure that before I file on my actual client, I take off those sharp edges. So make sure that you go through with another file, take off those sharp edges, and then I always will run my finger all the way down from top to bottom just to make sure that there's no more sharp edges, okay? So if I can run my finger down that without feeling a sharp edge or even cutting myself, I know that I'm safe to work on my client. All right, so same thing on the other side, just really quick going through there, making sure everything is smooth. All right, so we're gonna start on our sidewalls. Let me come in a little bit. Start on our sidewalls and just like I was doing when I was filing my smile line, I wanna keep my file straight up and down. So all I see is that blue line of my file. If you start to angle the file where you're starting to see that gray part of it, that means that you're gonna be cutting in and you can tend to get a little notch right in this corner here. So making sure that I'm keeping my file straight up and down, straight in line with the finger and bringing that extension out here. Okay, so notice as I'm filing, I'm putting opposite pressure on the other side of the finger. So when I'm filing on my right side, I put pressure on the left side with my thumb. So that way, as I'm filing, I'm gonna get a nice straight, even file, and it's not gonna make the nail kind of wonky go back and forth, okay? So always make sure that you're putting that counter pressure to balance that finger, so that's gonna give you a really nice straight um, straight line. Okay, same thing on the other side. I'm going to use my fingers here, putting pressure here while I'm putting pressure with my file on the left side. So that way, again, I'm going to get nice straight sidewalls, straight lines here. And then when I'm doing my free edge, I actually will hold with both fingers. And that way I can, again, get that nice straight edge. Okay, if I didn't hold that, see how it's gonna kind of wobble back and forth. I'm never gonna get a straight free edge if it's wobbling back and forth. So secure it there. So make sure that it's not gonna wobble and you're gonna get a nice straight free edge. All right, let's come through and contour. I'm gonna work right around that cuticle area and I'm doing kind of rounded strokes. So it's not just flat. I'm actually rounding my file down the sides here. If we take a look, let's see if you guys can see that. Let me see if I can, okay, let me come in just a little bit more here. There we go. Do you see how it's straight on the side here? So as I was filing on the side, let me bring my file in here, it's gonna put a straight edge right there, okay? What we're trying to do is we're trying to contour that. So instead of that straight edge, we're actually gonna make that nice and curved on the sides. So that's why we are gonna come kind of down and around. So kind of rounded strokes, okay? And then you can either work downward, you can work upward and kind of pull upward, or you can do a little bit of both, whatever your comfort level is. If you're new to filing, slow down. You don't have to file super fast. Perfect that technique, perfect that motion. And then once you've perfected that motion, then you can file a little bit faster, okay? So trust me, slow down, perfect the technique first, and then work on speed. Same thing on the other side contouring around that cuticle area, contouring my sides. I think we're looking good. And then I like to just kind of file right through that whole entire extension. Now, if I'm looking at it from the side here, this is what you guys, this is kind of the angle of my file. Let's see if I can 
Now, I don't know, sorry guys, I'm trying to make sure that you can see this and understand, but I don't think I'm gonna get the right view. So basically you're trying to just kind of thin out that free edge. So the majority of your pressure with your file is gonna to be towards your free edge. So you're gonna put pressure at that free edge and kind of pulling back and up into our stress area. So let me come from this side. So we're at kind of an angle like this, okay? So that's the angle that my file's at. So I'm thinning and tapering here at my free edge, but I'm leaving the bulk up into that stress area. So that's why we're gonna be at an angle here. We're not filing like this, okay? I hope that makes sense and I hope that's an okay view for you guys to see. All right, let me check my lower arches here because I did not actually come back and do that. So keeping that straight in line, again, that file straight in line with the finger, making sure that I'm not filing up into the corner like that. I'm coming straight in and basically bringing that product straight up to where that lower arch should be, right out from those side walls. Okay, same thing on the other side. Turner on the other side. I got a little bit of product kind of up in that corner. Let me turn you here so you can see, guys. So this is kind of the view that we're seeing. And again, really just making that come straight out from that natural nail. All right, so nice and sharp, nice and crisp. Oh, let's see, work, or no, sorry, wish. Uh, do you work on real people? I actually do. I am a real live nail tech in salon. You are seeing my actual nail station at my salon here. Um, right now though, we are doing demos on our practice hand so you guys can learn some cool techniques here. So yes, I am a actual real live nail tech. <laughs> okay, so I always like to finish my nail by looking from my client's perspective. I wanna make sure that what she sees is what I see and if there's anything that um, needs to be perfected, I'm gonna see from her view, okay? Uh, Victoria Kilman, Karen, how can you hold the free edge if it was shorter or on a natural nail? If it's a lot shorter, that's a great question, but if it's a lot shorter, maybe like that, I would still hold that finger up here rather than a little farther down here for a longer nail, but holding here, you would still be able to file here and keep it from wobbling back and forth. So hopefully that answered your question. So let's go back to our client's perspective. Come up here. There we go. And I'm gonna look at that nail straight on. Make sure that my sides are nice and straight. I think we're good here. Make sure my free edge is straight. Check that. And then I'm gonna look backwards down the barrel of the nail. So kind of from this view, let me come in just a little bit more. Oops, that was way too close. All right, there we go. So you can kind of see straight down the barrel of that nail. I'm gonna kind of rock it up and down so I can really see if there's any higher low points anywhere from that free edge all the way up here, all the way back through that cuticle. So by just kind of lightly rocking it, you're gonna be able to see everything from the cuticle to the free edge. And then I'm just gonna come back in. Any low, little high spots, low spots, I'm gonna really just perfect from this view. Any last little bits around my cuticle. And I think we are good there. All right, looking good. All right, you guys wanna see the finished nail? See what it looks like now that we got all of our filing done. Let's see what that, what those colors are gonna look like. All right, so let's dust her off here. Oops, there we go. Dust everything off, get all of that out of there. So it's looking pretty good. It looks like I got just a little bit more right in that lower arch. Just a tiny little bit right there. Okay, let me check my other side. All looks good on that side. I'm gonna come back in with a little bit of my swipe. This was the same thing that we were using earlier. We're gonna cleanse that nail. Again, getting all of that dust off of there starting to look pretty you guys but this is one of those times because we've got that mylar in there you're really going to start to see that pop once we actually get that top coat on so i'm going to come back through one more coat of my protein bond 
And the protein bond, I feel like, starts to kind of hide some of those scratch marks. So we're not going through with the buffer. You notice I just ended with my 150 grit file. I didn't buff. We don't need to buff because if we buff too smooth, our top coat is going to chip, okay? So that coat of protein bond is really gonna give us a little bit of extra adhesion for our top coat to adhere really well. I just grabbed my ultimate finish top coat today. It was nice and handy here. So that is what I'm gonna do. And let's see here. All right, so we're gonna come through, do our coat of top coat. I know I'm kind of hiding the hiding the mylar, you guys, but here you go. Now you can start to really see that pop through. So let's go ahead and get our nice coat of top coat on. Come in nice and close, and you guys can see that gorgeous mylar. We've got that darker color right through our smile line, and then our glitter kind of faded out from there. And yes top coat makes everything pop so hopefully you had fun with that design i'm going to get, get that into um, our light here cure that really quick but i do have a question for you guys on one of our earlier streams i think it was last week there was somebody that was asking about um, cords and how do i organize my cords if that person is in the chat here let me know tell me that you're in the chat and i will be happy to show you guys how i Kind of arrange my cords um, under my table so that I'm not tripping over everything because you guys we have a lot of tools a lot of things that do require cords you can see I've got I actually have two lights so I've got my light over on the side here so I've got that light I've got my dust extractor that needs to be plugged in I have a second light that I use for me it's easier to have two lights um, I also let me grab my phone out of here quick sorry for the shakiness here guys but on the side here, I do have my electric file here. So all of these things have cords, my light overhead, all of these things have cords. So I'm just gonna really quick show you how I have them situated. So I actually have my cords going from my lights. I put those into my desk because I have my dust extractor mounted into my desk. So I have those cords going into that opening down there. And then if I come down underneath my table here, my dust extractor has a cord on the side and that just runs, you can kind of see underneath the dust extractor itself, coming all the way over to the side here. And all of those cords come up underneath my little cabinet on the side here. So there's enough room underneath here for those cords to come over here. And then all of my cords I have either zip tied or twist tied together. So all of that extra cord is kind of condensed a little bit. And then I have everything plugged into my uh, power strip here. You guys, I highly recommend using a power strip because that way you can turn it off at the end of the day and you don't have to worry about um, power surges or anything like that. You can just flip the switch on your power strip and turn everything off. So I hope the person that was asking about that was here today. If not, hopefully they will rewatch our live stream. So here is our final look on our nail. Let me come in nice and close so you guys can see. See all of that mylar, all of that really, that really popping color that's underneath there. I know a couple of you guys have asked to see from the other side. So from the other view, from the client's view, that's what our nail is gonna look like. So hopefully you guys had a wonderful time today. If you enjoyed today's lesson, if you learned something new, if you want to see more, more nail designs, more education, please like, please subscribe to our channel, set your notifications so that you can always get notified when we go live. And hopefully we will see you guys back at another live. So have a wonderful week, everybody. See you next time.